every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Of course, this has been Thanksgiving week. All week long, yesterday was a big day all over this country. But to us believers, it's a big day every day. Every day. A big day every day Amen. to give thanks to, to our God yes. and to His Son, Jesus Christ, because yes. of Him. And what am I giving thanks for? I'm not going to hell. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> and let me read you this from the 13th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Um, and, oh, by him, who's him? By Jesus, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. Right there in that, in the, in the eighth verse. By him, therefore, by him, by Jesus, because of Jesus, through him, by Jesus, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Yes. Not just giving thanks for the name, because in Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 20, this same great apostle wrote in the letter there that I, for this cause, I bow my knee to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bow my, look, hey, let's don't quote it. We're going, to the, we're going to the book of Hebrews right now, or, or excuse me, Ephesians right now in chapter 4. It's just, well, it's just right there on my Bible. It's on the same page. Ephesians 3, 14. How many of your partners? It's on the bottom of your letter, right? Yes. Ephesians 1, 16 through 23. That's right. 3, 14 through 20. That's right. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom I bow my knees to the Father of Jesus Christ, of whom of the Father the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We are named after the Father because Jesus inherited his name from the Father. Yes. That's right. yes. And we are joint heirs with him. Yes. Who give thanks unto God. Yes. Praise God. Now you come on down into this fourth chapter and he ends with the 20th verse, now unto him that is able. Now here's the greater works that Jesus talked about in the 14th chapter of John in the covenant meal. The works that I do shall you do also. Uh, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father and the Holy Spirit is coming and he'll live with you and by He in, in you forever. Yes. Now here's the greater work. Now unto him who is able to do, he is able by the Holy Spirit in us, is able to do exceeding abundantly Amen. above all that we ask or think. You know, get ready to give glory and thanksgiving to God according to the power that works in us. Now that should be on your mind right. all the time, yes. Yes. not the flu, yeah. no. not li some little handmade virus. That's right. yeah. So true. God, I remember it, class. I remember it when polio was a, a killer, yeah. Yeah. and worse than that those that did not die from it were crippled for life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My cousin had it and she had big scars right here 
on the side of her in, in, inside here, she had these huge scars so she could use her feet. Thank God she was never in braces. And I was just a little boy, and they thought I had the flu. And that was it. It had all of the same symptoms as a cold or a flu. And, uh, and I, I, I was at home sick with it, whatever it was. And thank God for a mother that knew how to pray. Yes. And so I was propped up in the bed. I was feeling a lot better. And I had a lot of magazines right there that I had been reading because I, I was feeling good. And so I reached down there to get my magazines and I couldn't reach. And I'm telling myself to get those magazines and I couldn't move. I could move my hands and I'm looking at the magazines. They're not any further away from me than that bowl of fruit. And I, 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 but I, I, I couldn't do anything about it. Man, I hollered mother and she came running in there. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? I said, mother, I can't, I, 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 I can't bend over and catch, get my, 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 my magazines. Man, she hit her knees right beside that bed. She put her hands on me. Now, she wasn't baptized in the Spirit at that time. But I'm telling you, she'd pray all night long and all day long in her natural. Yeah. She just prayed. And she did not move until I picked up those magazines. Amen. And I was all right. Amen. But thank God. Yes. Give thanks to God, which taught people. And of, of course, back in those days, there were people that had, that knew and had learned how to do this, different exercises that would get it out of it. But of course, the medical people didn't have any faith in that and they didn't want to believe that. And later they did. Later they admitted we were wrong. But thank God they got a vaccine. Brother Copeland, thank God they have a vaccine for COVID. No, they don't. It's not tested. It's an experimental drug at this stage. Amen. Amen. But you can take Deuteronomy 28, yes. where it says fever and all that, and then you go to Galatians 3, 13, 14, that's yes. redeemed from the curse of the law and walk off. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want to read this from the classic Amplified, Philippians chapter 4, beginning with the fourth verse. Oh, I love it. <clears throat> Rejoice in the Lord. When? Always. 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 I can't only talk but thank God. I rejoice. <clears throat> Delight, gladden yourselves in him again, I say, rejoice. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your considerateness, your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. Now here's, here's what I want you to get. Listen, 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 listen. Do not fret. The King James says, don't be careful. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. I'm going to show you something here, class. Come on. I'm going to, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I will show you the power of thanksgiving. Yes. Okay. Yes. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request 
with thanksgiving continue to make your wants known to God. Not fretting and prayers of God, God, what am I going to do? No, put a smile on your painful face. And I don't care what someone has diagnosed for your body or for your mind, your brain, or what, I don't care. Why? Because I don't, I've rolled all that care, that anxiety uh, over on God. When I first learned how to do that, being content with transcends all understanding shall garrison mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And for the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence, is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there's any virtue, if there is any excellence, if there be anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things Fix your mind on them and practice what you've learned, received, and heard, and seen in me. You do them. Thank you, my dear. Miss Paula Marie. Think on these things. Whatever you, 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 me, anybody, whatever you think about most of the time, you will eventually become good or bad. My dad would say, Kenna. If I could unzip your head, there wouldn't be anything but airplanes and motorcycles come out. I said, yes, sir. (laughs) And he's right. Did you know in World War I, if you wanted to be a pilot, if if you flew a motorcycle, you were up on top of the list? You were good for pilot training. Right after the one, just before the war was over, man that owned a furniture company there in Fort Worth. His name was Wooten. And, um, and he had a, a small twin. It was, it was a, a Lockheed airplane. Well, it was the same kind of airplane that Amelia Earhart flew. It was a Lockheed. It's either Lockheed 10 or Lockheed 12. I don't remember now. Anyway, he called and said, uh, uh, we, the war wasn't quite over, but they realized that they had shut down all civil aviation in the United States, except civil air patrol and things like that. He said, we've, we've tested Mr. Wooten's airplane. We got it up going. Would you and your son like to go? And of course he, he said, yes. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get to get up in an airplane. Ah. And he put me up in the front seat. And I guess it's because my eyes were glazed over. But he said, don't you touch anything. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> we walked out of the tarmac there in Abilene, Texas at, at the municipal airport. I had my dad by the hand. I was eight years old. Elementary school. Either eight or nine, anyway, between eight and nine, I guess. And we were walking away from that airplane. I had him by the hand. I stopped and turned around and looked at that little Lockheed. I said, Daddy, I'm going to do that. He said, what? I said, I'm going to fly airplanes. He said, you can do that, boy, and walked away. What I thought about the most, and I, I mean, I thought about that all the time. I drew airplanes all over my 
book covers. Uh, just every kind of airplane I could think of. I dreamed about airplanes. And I wanted motorcycles so bad. And now the ministry has a fleet of airplanes. And I have one, two, three motorcycles. And I am a happy camper. <laughs> I thought about that. I learned many years later that my flying was a calling, that I was going to be held responsible for introducing the use of airplanes to ministries that didn't believe they could have a new car, much less an airplane. And then I learned how to use one when I was chosen to fly co-pilot on Brother Roberts Ministries airplane. Finest airplane I'd ever been up close to. 4,000 horsepower. Get get my hands on that thing. (laughs) Anyway, but I thought about it all the time. Well, unless I was preoccupied, that was on my mind all the time, particularly the airplanes. And uh, I don't remember ever drawing a motorcycle, but I did the airplanes. And eventually, I soloed in 1959. And I took little lessons here and there and the other place. And I was, in, in fact, I was looking at that log book yesterday. And there's some other things I was looking for in there. And I, and I went back and looked at all of the, these hour after hour and then solo, first super solo, false cross country solo, all in that first little log book about that thick. <laughs> then later came all the rest of the log book. I thought about it more than anything else. So when we think about, which I do now, I think about praising and thanking God all the time. Unless I'm preoccupied. But what I do as an occupation is a praise and thanksgiving to God. These things I learned so embedded in me from Oral Roberts and Kenneth E. Hagin. Brother Hagin would say, if you praise long enough, the spirit of worship will come. And once the spirit of worship comes, the glory will fall. And in that glory come the miracles and the outstanding activity of God. So to praise him. And now let's go back over there to the book of Ephesians because I want to bring this so, it is so telling here in the the uh, fourth chapter, the 29th verse, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. Then you come right straight over into the fifth chapter and the fourth verse neither filthiness nor foolish talking, foolish talking or jesting, nasty, stupid jokes going around saying just dumb things all the time because Jesus called those idle words, inoperative, no no faith. Now, there's nothing wrong with humor because a merry heart does good like a medicine. That's the reason Jesse Duplantis well, I don't care what he's saying. I don't care what he's saying. He'll say, write this down. And you say, okay. <laughs> and now what am I saying? And you think, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I said that in front of him one day. He said, now what am I saying? I said, Jesse, I don't have any idea. <laughs> well, he, you know, he and Jerry and I, we plug at one another all the time. He say, yeah, but it's right. I say, yeah, but it's good. And now he was a very, he was an entertainer, played all kinds of instruments. And, uh, but he was a, he was a sad young man. His, his, his early life was, was 
very sad, very poor. And, uh, but he said he began to preach and funny things started coming out of his mouth and he tried to stop it, but he couldn't. It was a merry heart. And he learned that. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, not fit, but rather the giving of thanks. Thanks. Let thanksgiving be in your heart and mouth all the time. The giving of thanks. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. In all things rejoice, in all things give thanks. Now, people have, um, and, and it did it because it didn't understand it. Well, give, give thanks for that broken arm because God probably did it to prove he could heal it. No. I heard a dear brother, I knew him. This is back in the full gospel business men's days. Back in the days when that man came up to me and, and, and was talking about brother. See, Gloria and I were scripturally illiterates when we came into the thing. When we got both born again, we didn't know anything about the Word, neither of us. I, I told her, I said, Isn't it, did you notice that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tell the same story? She said, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> and T.L. Osborne said, Copeland, you're born free. <laughs> I didn't have, we didn't have any religion to unlearn. Anyway, it was always a joy to us we looked on the joy side of everything. And, and, and Brother Roberts, Granville Oral Roberts, go Roberts. Whew. And I miss him. But anyway, he would start his meetings with <laughs> that Stuart Hamlin song. God is a good God. And that was his favorite song. It was his theme song. Richard Roberts sang it, uh, all, sang, sang it for him when he was old enough to, to do that. And Rich, great voice. I mean, he, he wanted to be an entertainer just like I did. And he was running from God. Anyway, then he went to old Roberts University and you know the story. So God is a good God. And you, you can't copyright a title. You can copyright the lyrics. There, there's another song with that same title. God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, he's a good God. Yes. And this man came up to me and said, I wish he wouldn't say that. Well, God is a good God. I said, you don't even say God is a bad God. No, but he'll give people the wrong idea about it. Well, he preached out of the old covenant, God. And, and then later another man said, God will break your leg just to prove he can heal it. I was in the service when he said it and it just stunned me. He's a good God. Yes, he He's worthy of our praise yes, and our thanksgiving. Let's just close out today praising and worshiping God. We raise our praise and thanksgiving to you, sir. We thank you and praise and worship you this weekend over all the rest of the weeks of the year. We just praise and worship you and thank you in the sweet, precious, marvelous name of Jesus who, who shed his blood for our life. And we praise and thank you for it in that great and marvelous name. Jesus. Amen. Been a good weekend. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, son. Praise God. Yes, sir. Thank you, Papa. This week we learned how praise is a lifestyle and how you can rejoice in all things and give thanks to God. And a key to living in the blessing of the Lord is having thanksgiving in your heart and coming out of your mouth all the time because there is supernatural power released through praise and through thanksgiving that can transform every part of your life. And if you missed any broadcast from this week's special, you can watch them free on KCM.org or on KCM's Roku channel. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Get information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Build your foundation in the Word with the online learning center of video courses, Believer's Academy, Bible School from right where you are. 
gain access to Kenneth Copeland's Partner Letter, each letter written to meet the everyday needs of our partners. Download free books from the Bonus Library with over 50 titles by the Copelands available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are. Every Friday is offering day on the broadcast, and I'd like to read to you from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 6, which says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. You know, this is a special week to give an offering. If you go back and study the scriptures all the way through the Old Testament, up through the New, you see that thanking God is more than just saying, Hey, God, thanks. I appreciate it. So often, Often through the scriptures, you see, in addition to them saying thank you, is them bringing an offering. And this is something we are supposed to be doing all the time because of Jesus Christ. We are supposed to be continually offering this sacrifice of praise, this sacrifice of thanks. So I encourage you today, sow back into the word that you've heard this week and do it with gratitude in your heart. Father, thank you for your word. I want to sow a seed. Thank you for what your word's done for me. Let me give an offering. And one scripture that I like in particular from the book of Deuteronomy says, uh, and I'll paraphrase it for you, but basically how do you know what to give? Well, you think about how good he's been. Isn't that good? How do I know what to give in this offering? Well, take a second and think about how good God has been to you. And that's how you know what to give. Partners, listen, we want to say thank you. Thank you for your faith, your prayer, your support. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland love you, appreciate you, praying for you all the time. And your seeds sown into this ministry have helped send the good news of the gospel from the top of the world to the bottom, all the way around the middle, praise God. And everything that is sent out from KCM is made possible, first of all, by the grace of God. And in addition to that, the, the faithful partnership of you, the partners of this ministry. For more than 50 years, this, this word has been preached and now generations of whole families have heard the life-changing power of God. Lives have been touched. People have been changed forever. So as you sow your financial seed into Kenneth Copeland Ministries, what you're doing is connecting with a ministry that is called to preach faith and has specialized in using faith and teaching and preaching and walking and fighting by faith for more than 50 years. That's what you're connecting with. And as you partner with that, expect to see that same thing, that same victory that overcomes the world, even our faith at work in your life. Father, we thank you for the giving of the people today. We receive it. We ask you to see it and receive it. And we call them blessed in Jesus' name. Listen, thank you so much for joining us this week on this broadcast. If you missed anything, you can always go back and watch them free on kcm.org or on KCM's Roku channel. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again next time. Until then, remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Today's Believer's Voice of Victory was brought to you by the faithful partners and friends of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Go to kcm.org.uk to receive your free digital download of today's broadcast. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.